Welcome to Surroundscapes, an audio and video podcast series featuring a diverse collection of individuals with thought leaders from around the world addressing the general subject of the future of business. This content is curated by Blue Sound Professional and focuses on the role of the oral and visual senses in creating unique, delightful and compelling experiences to stimulate business. This first series of Surroundscapes is based on the future of hospitality and retail, the sector of the market in which Blue Sound Professional is most active and a market sector especially hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. The first series of Surroundscapes is focused on the future of hospitality and retail, the sector of the market in which Blue Sound Professional is most active and a market sector especially hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. I'd like to introduce Rob Anders from NEO. Rob's talking to us from Tel Aviv and he's going to talk to us about uh, the NEO digital audio platform. This is a talk I've been really looking forward to. I met Rob earlier on this year and was fascinated by the work he's doing within NEO. So I'm looking forward to this as much as I hope you are. So welcome, Rob. Hi, Graham. How are you? Nice to uh, be here. Looking forward to the conversation myself. Great. So let's start by just finding out a little bit about uh, your background and who you are. Okay. So as you said, I'm here in Tel Aviv, but my accent probably gives away that I'm a Londoner to start with. Um, I've spent the last 20 years building out high tech companies, um, specifically looking at the relationship between people and technology, how people interact with technology, usually looking at sectors and trends that are just on the verge of taking off and going digital with a particular need to kind of educate the market, disrupt markets. And, um, and clearly after spending well, probably 12 years involved in the display technology market. I was the CEO of one of Europe's leading display technology companies before NEO. Um, guilty as charged in bringing lots of digital noise into our world. Um, one of the people that was involved in kind of enabling screens to become ubiquitous in our world. And at some stage, and we'll come on to it in a moment, the sense of huge screens everywhere in the real world, which are bombarding us with information and advertising whilst kids at the same time are walking around with screens in their faces and, and they're not disaffected and disassociated with the real world, you know, myself and together with my business partner felt that it's really now the time to bring a digital experience to the world, which is much more impactful, um, kind of the positive alternative. And, you know, I'm excited to, to talk to you about it more today as I was when we got together first in Amsterdam earlier this year. Great, thanks, thanks, Rob. So let's start by by what exactly is digital art? Hmm. So sometimes it's easier to start by saying what it's not. Um, you know, art for a lot of people is is even intimidating. It's kind of this loaded word. Um, and when people talk digital art, they're thinking, "What well, you do? You mean you're going to take a picture of the Mona Lisa and put it on a screen?" Because quite frankly, I, I think the majority of people don't get overly excited by that. So I like to frame it in a different way. What do we know is that A, art has always been part of society, the very core, the fabric of society since whenever. Initially, thousands and thousands of years ago, you know, it was, it was often for religious symbolism. Um, but really, art has, cut, has taken us through history. And it's another way of people telling the history of the world. Um, in fact, one of the reasons that art collectors who spend their years um, and all their money often in not just filling their walls but continuing to buy art is because they see themselves as kind of custodians of, of culture you know they are owning part of history and that's because artists do a few things the first thing they do is they tell the story of the world we live in the second thing they do traditionally is use any technology or any tool they have access to in order to both create and tell their story so it goes to reason that if we look at the world today, in fact, you know, let's take a step back. Even if you look back to Leonardo da Vinci time, he would use perspective and tools, manual low tech tools to start working at how you define perspective and bring it into a, into a painting. 
the reason that people have landscape paintings is because technology enabled paint to actually go into a tube and travel outside. So if you take that in mind and you think that, look, we're now pretty much at the fourth industrial revolution, we're in this digital connected world, the emerging generation of artists of the iPad generation, that there is more access today than ever before to the tools that artists can have access to, to create and tell their story in a digital way. Um, it used to be a 4K camera was $10,000, $15,000. You can now shoot it on your iPhone. So you put all of this together. And when we talk about digital art, we're talking about art, which was created digitally to be experienced digitally. So specifically, and I know a lot of the viewers here are kind of have that technical slant to them. We're talking about rich media, video and new media art. So anything actually from static, still digital photography or images to moving image video art, all the way through to virtual reality, augmented reality, interactive, generative, it doesn't really matter. But from Neo's standpoint, for digital art, we're talking about art which was created digitally to be experienced digitally. And in fact, often we refer to the fact that what was once paint on canvas is now film and code on a screen. So that's kind of a little bit of an intro in terms of in terms of digital art. And we'll show more obviously in a moment when we share the screen. Excellent. That's really useful to know. So let's go on and and talk about um, what exactly is Neo and how did it come about? So that's a fantastic question. It might be it might be easier for me to uh, to share my screen. Let's start by let's start by just telling you where it came from as a follow up to what I said earlier. Um, you know, on the one side, you have art as something which is seen as quite intimidating for people. You have artists around the world who we believe have a story to tell and they haven't always got the platform by which they can tell that story. And I think now more than ever, people need a moment to stop, to reflect, to ask a question, which is really what art's all about. Um, and so when you brought together my personal experience prior, which was in the world of display technology and bringing a lot of, you know, less meaningful content to the world, let's say through screens, and in my, with my business partner, who is not only one of the leading product uh, experts in the country over here, but has also um, been lecturing um, at the Top Art Academy for the last 20 years and, and has kind of seen the evolution of digital format artwork becoming more and more mainstream, but with its own challenges. A lot of this was the ideation that came behind Neo and wanting to do something impactful. But what actually is Neo? Let me share my screen and show it to you. So, Neo is, is, is a platform. Very often people would refer to us as a kind of like Netflix or Spotify, I guess, um, for digital art. We specifically focus ourselves on, on, on being a premium supply of content to a very broad audience. What do we mean by that? So, first of all, Neo has built a community right now of around about four and a half thousand artists and galleries from over 60 countries in the world and these are artists that really specialize in these video and new media formats of artwork alongside a lot of the traditional work so some of these people will deal with video but they'll also deal with painting and this community has given us access until now to the most significant collection of works available to be experienced by a broad audience around 13,000 artworks many different themes and genres and formats and colors and so forth and then as a tech company at our core an art and tech company we build a very robust rights managed platform which is actually underpinned by uh, artificial intelligence we can come on to that later which essentially enables these artworks to be delivered according to different business models and then be displayed on any type of screen projector, LED wall, any type of digital canvas, according to these different business models. And I guess the reason we do this and the, and the reason and the thing that Neo is all about is that we believe we have the opportunity and that this is the absolute perfect moment to reimagine the way that people are consuming art, both in terms of where they're consuming it beyond the traditional white walls of the galleries and the museums into commercial locations, public spaces, as well as private homes, but essentially enabling people where you live, work and explore to plug in to this connected community and content repository, which really brings inspiration into people's lives. And the beauty of it being digital is that 
on the one side, there's no limit in format, but also there's no limit in scale. And what you can see here is the example of walls within physical spaces becoming living canvases in their own right. So rather than marble, we're working with a lot of the top architects and designers in the world to say, how do we reimagine physical space within a digital connected world? And how do we actually bring the buildings to life? And in this case, we actually have an artist who's created data paintings that take meaningful sets of data and then create software algorithms, which in real time will convert this into the visual work that you see. So it's not a looping video, it's a constantly changing living piece of artwork. Um, and there's something really special about that. Now, we've spoken about formats, we've spoken about scale. When we talk about artworks that are becoming interactive, this takes the end experience to another level altogether because now all of a sudden, rather than this being passive, the viewer, the physical space, and the artwork all become one. So ultimately, to your initial question, Neo is the platform which is, an which is essentially enabling seamless access to a high quality collection of digital format artworks. And so on the one side, we're on this mission to empower artists everywhere to showcase and to earn in new ways from their art. And at the same time, our desire is to inspire the broadest possible audience by giving them seamless access to this type of content, irrespective of the space that they're in. So does that answer your question, Graham? It certainly does. And uh, those are some amazing images. So, yeah, I mean, that's remarkable. But I've seen different commercial spaces with, with video art playing or videos playing. It's kind of somewhat noise almost uh, to, to many of us. Um, and we see digital billboards and all this kind of thing. You know, how is it different since Neo is around? So I think that's a great question. I think there's two ways I'll answer that. The first thing is that ultimately, as with any type of content experience, the curation of the content, what the selection of the content, the right type of content. Um, I, I don't think this is the time or the place to go down the rabbit hole of what's art and what's not art, but certainly a, a carefully curated collection of, of art, which on the one side, comes from an artist, you know, and, and in Neo's case, we're really working with the, the creme de la creme. And as such, these are artworks that have a story to tell and very often we'll implement them in a way, in a way in which people can actually understand what that story is, you know, through engaging, you know, through the mobile app or so forth. Um, so, so the curation is very, very important. But if you were to look in locations that have done a pretty good job, you know, I remember years ago going to the Standard Hotel in New York, I used to go to the elevators and there was a super cool piece. The challenge was that the end result was desirable, but that in practice, actually getting the work, implementing the work was a lot of heavy lifting. You know, the designers and the architects are scared of technology. Um, you know, they would have to go and find the artwork from a gallery, do a deal, then find an IT infrastructure to support it. And quite frankly, by the time all of it was done, it, it was good but the heavy lifting was such that it then pretty much stays the same for years and, and and if there's a technical problem it's it's a nightmare so there was a lot of heavy lifting it reminds me back you know i think you know you guys being being so audio focused when digital music started and we always had some early adopters who kind of would know how to rip rip a torrent and then burn it onto an mp3 player but the moment that something became as quick and easy and accessible as itunes you know the click of a button even if now you're paying for it it just opened up the opportunity. So what we say is that with Neo, the approach we've taken in terms of building an ecosystem with all the rights management, managed content there, the technology to deliver it, but actually, and this is also relevant to your audience will come onto this, the partners that actually sit in that ecosystem, including the architects, including the designers, including the AV integrators and so forth. So if you are the end user, or the architect and designer who's often the end influencer to the user, we take away a lot of that heavy lifting and enable this to be quite easily implemented, number one, as a starting point. And the final thing is that the nature of the platform, you know, when we see digital as humans, we kind of expect it to change. 
So you can put a painting above your wall and it's there for 20 years, or in the case of hotels, they'll put something up there for a seven years before renovation cycle, and no one really thinks about it. But as humans, we're so used to digital changing, what Neo has been able to do is not only enable that initial implementation to be quite easy, but business models which enable this experience to be rotating. Um, and very often in a means, in a, in a way in which the people on site, the hotel manager, they, no one needs to do anything. So it's all remotely controlled, remotely curated. So ultimately you find the appropriate business model which enables a rotating experience, which is perfectly presented with technology which is robust for 24 seven secure playback. And it's that end to end piece which makes this unique and enables the market to now embrace it in the way that it is. That makes a ton of sense. I, I have personal experience as a musician from moving from analog to digital and, and actually doing the first digital album in the genre that, that I was involved in and, and the extreme discomfort of doing that and, and unreliability moving through to now where it's second nature. And as you say, mm -hmm. we in Blue Sound uh, Professional are dealing with streaming music and and that analogy is really it's very helpful to me um in terms of being able to associate everything that goes behind the experience that that you're actually seeing even things that we don't think about you know the licensing the rotation the the tech and making sure it's seamless and works all the time so that's great so the next question i suppose is who are your customers and what sort of, I presume you have some customers in the residential space and some customers in the commercial space. And what sort of split is there between those two spaces? So um, our vision is very much that every wall in principle is our target audience. Um, I don't know many locations, whether it's homes or offices, uh, or hotels or hospitality areas or so forth that don't have something on the wall. Now, whether that is high-end gallery art or whether it is you know, a, a cheap reproduction or a poster. Um, so I think the opportunity is to really reach everywhere. But we understand also there's education. You know, people wake up in the morning and they know about their music and they, and they know about Netflix. People are not waking up in the morning, oh, God, you know, I've got to have some digital art, okay? And so we made a decision we made a decision to enter the market by focusing on two groups. One was a group of commercial customers, hospitality, real estate, public spaces, uh, corporate offices. And on the consumer side, we focus more on the premium high net worth um, market that actually product and service wise and price point wise, it's more similar to kind of the B2B side. Um, and, and the reason we did that, especially for B2B, is because we felt that if we wanted to educate and showcase the Neo experience to the broadest possible audience, if you're in hotels, if you're in law offices, if you're in airports, the number of people that you're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis is significant. And in turn, that enables you to educate an audience such that at the right moment, and in fact, later this year, beginning of next year, that moment will be, up, be upon us, we can then say, you can now experience this at home. And, you know, when I look at you guys again on the, on the audio, you all know a, a lot better than I do that there's a lot of challenges again to do with rights between music and private and music in commercial locations. Now, in, in, in the art world, we don't have the same, those same regulations. I think definitely as an artist first organization, certainly there are, there are, uh, there is integrity. There is what we call responsible distribution. There should be appropriate um, price points which reflect where it's shown but in principle we have the ability to support all of these types of locations um, but we felt b2b first so really hotels cruise ships um, you know restaurant all the all of the ones that you guys will know um, and um, and in fact it's going to be interesting to see over time how that experience becomes holistic you know I think the opportunity right now is as significant and disruptive as when MTV hit the market and all of a sudden there was this audio and visual experience which kind of was touching people whether it's at homes or even in the bars so those are our customers and they use them across a very broad range of, of locations within their sites 
Yeah, that's that's fascinating. And and you touched on something that that I've been thinking about and we've been talking about a lot uh, over the last few weeks, which is this creation of experiences by melding congruent audio and visual stimuli. And as you mentioned, there's there's the rights issues in in the music side, and I can it's really interesting to hear how that that manifests in the in the visual side. So you just you just touched on it, but but maybe you want to elaborate a little bit more about what type of locations are implementing Neo. Okay, so yeah, and I'd love to. And again, I'll go back to my screen. What I'll say just as a starting point is that very often our customers refer to you know to the customer journey you know how do we engage with them and give them that wow experience at every stop along the way now we know that in real estate they're driven by dollar per square foot we know in the hospitality at the end of the day it's, you know it's it's a calculation dollar per you know occupancy and dollar per room but there's also this understanding that you need to provide an experience which in turn influences that price point and they very often look at the customer journey from if you think about it, before you even book a hotel, like the online experience, the website, through to arriving at the property, going through their location from you know the outside of their of their of their property, all the way through to all the way through to the rooms. So with Neo, we're working alongside that same journey, um, and that can relate and start with what we call projection mapping, which is where we actually turn the entire exterior of a building into that canvas using projectors. Very often, for example, when these are launch events happening for some of our customers, this can be walking then on a smaller scale into the outdoors of hotels where within their gardens and their grounds, we're projecting onto the sides of the walls. I'll come on to that in a moment. This is one example of uh, Victoria Harbour in Hong Kong, LED hanging down walls. About 5 million people saw this with a, a selection of moving image artworks inspiring people across the bay. As I mentioned earlier, in the hotel grounds, the idea of projections on the side of a wall. In the lobbies now of the building, once we go in, these can again be projections. They can be sculptures where the actual canvas itself is a unique LED. In some cases for hotels, like in this example from Marriott, we've actually created interactive artworks on sculptures on the ceiling. So people come in through the uh, main doors and they suddenly see themselves in a particular way on the screen. Through to sculptures which combine physical and digital, in this case, the tallest freestanding art sculpture in New York, which is projection and a physical sculpture. And then of course, dedicated standard screens where in place of a painting on the wall, you might have a framed 84 inch professional screen in the lobby. In meeting rooms, we are ridding the world of black screens when they're not being used. So in that case, the Neo solution enables you to have constant art playing on the screen until someone needs the screen to show a presentation. And there's a very easy, um, solution which enables this to be a dummy free so no one needs to get the remote control and change it and we continue into spas and wellness areas bringing this kind of meditative almost collection of works to kind of calm and soothe people F&B areas um, bars restaurants anywhere where there's a captive audience that includes by the elevators when people are waiting for an elevator screens which are placed um, in unique locations within the bar so they don't look like a screen. It's like something just resting on the windowsill in this case of a very high-end bar. We have customers and hotels in particular that want their locations to become a cultural destination. They're having their own art room, whether that's a room of dedicated screens that are all showing unique pieces of artwork, or whether these are fully immersive rooms where you become part of this 360 degree all immersive wow experience. Some pretty crazy experiences here where people can totally lose themselves. So that probably shows you a very broad example or a broad series of how Neo can be applied anywhere from 
the public areas, across outside, inside. And what I didn't even show there is very often now we're going into the rooms and some hotels now, the TV is now the only art in the room and it's always showing off unless you're using the TV. Well, I'm looking forward to um, when I get to see more Neo experiences in my everyday life, when I go to hotels, in the rooms that I go to, because those look really, really compelling. So, you know, when you talk to customers, why are they interested in, in Neo, specifically digital art in general? And what, what does it bring to their space? I mean, you've touched on it, but maybe you want to go into a little more detail in that. So I think there's three things. I think, first of all, they're all looking for this memorable experience to wow the guests, to become a talking point. How can our guests be doing our marketing for us and putting us on, on Instagram? And I think those type of experiences, they are head turners. And because it can be applied in so many different ways, it can be uniquely implemented in a different site, you know, just by, very, by virtue of the different screen or the projector or the artwork itself. So first and foremost, they're driven by the experience. What does this do for their brand? You know, there is something now, especially now post-COVID, in, 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 in people looking to positively associate their name with um, either corporate social responsibility, supporting the arts, becoming the new patrons of the arts, supporting artists. You know, there is this, this thing that when you associate yourself with art, it's, it's, it's elevating your position, you're more premium. That's why a lot of the luxury brands do. So it's experience, it's positioning your brand, yeah, then there's the practical terms of this is something which can always change, like we said. You know, very often we look at and we ask our customers, how much are you spending on flowers? Because very often flowers is one of the only recurring revenues and the only something, the only rotating experience. And some, some hotels will spend thousands and thousands of dollars a month. And so the combination of the experience, the rotating aspect, the fact that we enable access to this broad um, this broad collection and then I think certainly for some of the bigger hotel customers um, you know the fact that this is an enterprise grade solution so it deals end to end with the rights with the security with the networking all of the reporting um, the fact that we provide additional layers of tools that people can come in and engage with the art through a mobile app and learn about it they can even take the experience home with them courteous of the brand so it's it's that full that full package and i think also and it will become more and more so um in the years to come neo as a, as a brand aims to be a statement you know if you're connected to neo that says something about you you, you are part of the revolution you're part of inspiring people you're part of impact you know and, and the brand the logo is something you know it's cool it's like i'm a neo gallery in my space so i think it's all of the above um and uh yeah it's 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 working well that's fascinating, and and um, that uh, that end bit about creating this this kind of community of patrons, forward-looking patrons, is 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 a really fascinating thing that I hadn't even really thought about. Um, but what I'm going to do now is turn it back a little bit to our audience, who are often very techy uh, AV integrators, and ask a more specific hardware question, which is. Do you need specific hardware for this? So, um, you know, let's come back to that statement I said earlier. We believe that the key here is enabling this experience to be seamlessly accessible. And part of that means that you must be able to play it on any type of screen or device. So the way that we built the player aspect, I guess a little bit similar to kind of some of the thinkings behind digital signage in terms of a 24 seven robust platform means that we can be used on any type of display device, either with an external player, which is an industrial grade player, or um, through integrating our software directly onto the professional screens. Um, so, and, and what we've done is gone out and built actually those strategic partnerships with the biggest display companies in the world, like our closest partner is probably Samsung, um, and we're working with them on a global level, which means that not only will there be a, a very neat integration out of the box with all the Samsung professional screens, and the same, by the way, goes with Barco for projection and so forth, um, but we also can leverage their, where necessary, their channel to provide local service supply and support is, uh, is, is, is accessible. 
and I would I would assume, and I think this is where it's exciting, is that a lot of your channel, those AV integrators, for example, probably sit in the same world. So I think a lot of them have access through Neo to, on the one side, use hardware that they might already be using with or, or, or other hardware, and and you know later we can talk about how they can actually benefit from a business perspective as well. But accessibility on any hardware is key. Great, great. That's that brings it kind of into more real world um, AV integrator kind of uh, thinking. And so um, does Neo as a company sell any hardware or is it just a service? Can you explain your revenue models and how it all works? So, so, so broadly speaking, no, we're, we're not a hardware company. We don't want to, and we realize, and I'd certainly after all the years know that the reason they call it a hardware business is because it's hard. Uh, um, you know, I think from us, whilst we do have a player, which is something to, that in most cases we we almost pre-issue, we don't look at that as a revenue stream. Um, you know, we look to earn from our from our from our content service, which is the combination of that software and 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 the and the content. So in most cases, the customers either they have a screen or through the integrator will provide them with a screen and we'll make our recommendation. And if I'm looking at the commercial spaces. Um, you know, the price points for a rotating collection of work can start from around about $200 a month for a screen. Um, and then when you go up in quantity, that price comes down. Obviously, when you're up in the rooms, you're talking about anywhere between $1 and $2 a month for the rooms. And then if you're talking about someone having a huge, some of the examples I showed you, you know, huge video walls in the in the lobbies, in the public areas, in the shopping malls, you know, then then you're talking about thousands of dollars a month if you want to have access to one of these rotating services. Uh, in fact, for some of those very large customers, we will often actually have the artworks through our community created for them and then licensed to them on a, on a kind of annual basis. Uh, so it's a pretty broad spread depending on uh, the type of content approach that they're looking for um, and the type of location that they'll be playing it in. Okay, that makes, that makes sense. Uh, so you again, you've you mentioned them a little bit before, but do you work with the traditional channel, AV integrators, consultants, designers, that sort of people? What's what's your usual way to market? So we've worked with a lot of people. Let's now focus on on what where do we see opportunity and where what has proven to be successful. So again, we'll differentiate between the B two B and the high net worth individuals. You know, the high net worth individual channel on the AV side is much more au okay fait with kind of premium and luxury and quality. You know, these are people's homes that spend a lot of money. Whereas it's less of the case we've experienced in, in, you know, in, in B2B, you know, people who are putting screens into airports and stuff, um, they, um, they, they don't see things exactly the same. Um, what we realized, we tried two different models. On the, at the beginning, we were thinking, okay, look, you know, let's give you access to Neo and to offer this to your customers and try and close a deal. Uh, obviously, they know how to sell hardware. They know how to sell hardware installation and support. Um, but when it came to the art, what we realized is, you know, the channel, the guys on the ground are often, you know, this is a new space for them. It's a little bit intimidating sometimes. They don't want to risk losing a deal for selling something they know by trying to sell an art subscription. And so what we introduced was actually a referral model. And so in that referral model, what we found is that they focus on their hardware. Um, and when it comes to the art, they literally just, if, if they sniff an opportunity that someone might be interested and we provide them with materials and they have a referral agreement, they will then basically pass that opportunity to our team and, and our team will go in and close and close the deal. And there'll be a revenue share that goes back to the, uh, to the, uh, to the referral partner. Um, so, so we're finding that that works very well. When you look at architects and designers, um, they themselves, um, we educate the architect community. We're doing AIA accreditation courses right now, um, but very much they have a good understanding of this. They like this, and the fact that Neo gives them the flexibility for it to be implemented according to their, you know, design uh, concept in terms of what type of screen and where it will be and what type of artwork. Usually, 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 again, the model is usually a referral model. These guys don't usually like to buy and to sell um, or to close these deals. Uh, they have to remain impartial to some extent. Um, so both of those channel partners are very important for us, you know, as are the strategic relationships with the manufacturers. 
and we believe that once that channel gets over the understanding they get over the oh well, we've always worked as a you know we get 25 points on reselling buying and selling once they're open to that and we do know that a lot of them are kind of this there's this sacred dream of the golden goose of the recurring revenue model um you know once they get it and they understand it then uh then then, then it works very well so so i think there's a lot of channel opportunity and and again if you think about guys that are out there selling into hospitality um a lot of them and i would you know we could do a survey I, I bet you that there's no shortage of people either customers or channel partners watching this video that are thinking oh i was i, I installed at this place last week and i know they put in a big video wall and this would be great for them you know this is an opportunity so 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 channel for us and, and strategic partnerships is all part of that ecosystem and it's very important for us that's great yeah you you've touched on a few things that over the years in in the industry I've seen, which is people having trouble, particularly in the AV integration community, monetizing content and software and recurring revenue, even though they really want to. So this idea of, of a referral uh, program sounds sounds perfect because they can do what they're best at, which is putting in the gear, and then they can pass it over to you and your guys who can make that gear really delightful and make the experience wonderful and as as you say if if people get real benefit out of the av hardware they're installing it makes them want to install bigger better systems in future because they get to see them perform in the way they're supposed to perform rather than just rather than just kind of having some lackluster images static images on it when it's not being used so that or makes a bit or God forbid you have, sorry for cutting you in, I know that it has an impact on our audio here, but the number of locations that have a big video wall and it's CNN or Bloomberg playing off in the lobby or with, you know, I won't talk about anyone in particular, but political leaders on the screen, okay? Um, and they've spent a million dollars on an, on an LED wall. So, you know, it can so easily turn into something which really blows people away. Yeah, that's that's terrific. So. One of the features of this podcast series is around um, coming out of this pandemic and, and being able to um, provide content that will allow the AV channel and also the end users in the hospitality and retail industries position themselves really well to bring people back out of their homes, back into public spaces. So how do you see digital art experiences within a post-COVID world? So, again, I mean, you can look at this at a few different levels. Do you remember when everyone went down into lockdown? All of a sudden, there was that moment of kind of, there might not be a tomorrow, and all of a sudden, humanity came together. Um, now, I'm, unfortunately, I don't, I don't hold that much regard for humanity to think that we stay in that, in that world of kind of fluffy clouds. Um, but I do believe but I do believe that there is some type of impactful awakening that people have. I think people are realizing that partnerships, people are realizing it's going to be tough for the next few years. People are waking up and thinking that, you know, there are ways that we can, that we can be a little bit more mindful, both in our own lives and in the experiences we want to bring to the audiences that we cater for, um, whether that's our staff, our visitors in a hotel. Um, and, I, and I think that, um, I think that with the with the lines blurring between home and office and, and private and public, I think people kind of are realizing that there's a need to have on demand access to this moment of meaning during the day. Even if you just stop for a moment, have a conversation, then go back to it. You know, it's like cleaning the cash. And I think that is something which in a lot of people's mind, a lot of people already say, oh, I kind of missed out aspects of the lockdown. Um, so on the one side, you've got that, you know, that that little twinkle of concepts in your mind that maybe just meaningful experience has a little bit of a role the second thing is you know, how are we differentiating our location from others when demand is limited what can we do which makes our place a talking point which gives something unique and memorable and that's where the experience play and i think also when we talk about that home office and and physical virtual overlap you know there's something about digital art um for us 
that enables people to take part of that experience with them. So you come into the hotel and we give you this you experience and then you can actually engage with it and, and take it home with you, throw it on your TV at home, courteous of the brand. So I think that virtual and physical overlap is important. Your physical space, virtual digital experience. I think again, businesses that not only give you that meaningful experience, but again, coming back to the point we said earlier, that can stand proud and say, we're doing something for community. We are supporting artists. We believe the world now more than ever needs you know, less diversity and more coming together. And you know, we're proud to support artists and proud to, to bring inspiration into people's lives. You know, I think for us, that's the driver. Um, and I think when you build any great company, you have to be purpose-driven every day because you know there's a lot of fights along the way. So for us, actually, that's, that's why we've created this company to start with. It's as if in some ways COVID has accelerated the market opportunity um, as it has in so many other places that are experiencing digital transformation. You know, the art world before COVID was this world that people traveled all over the world to and it was all social gathering. And now it's in lockdown, there's kind of all the art shows, all the art galleries, artists are locked in their studios. So there's a real need for there to be this unified platform which brings it out there. And, and I hope that, um, breaking down those barriers between the exclusive art world, which is intimidating for many and, and non-inclusive, and being, being the bridge to bring that inspiring story experience to the broadest audience, you know, the timing and the dots, and it all lines up, and, and it's like, this is our moment of opportunity. Excellent. So you touched on a number of things there that, that, um, that are kind of hot buttons, I suppose, for me. One of them is, this acceleration of trends that are already there. Um, we're seeing it, obviously, with people having to do business online, having to, to buy stuff online, having to have meals delivered rather than going out to restaurants. And so that was a trend that was happening anyway, that, that trend from physical brick and mortar to more online. And as we come out of this, people now, even some people that haven't ever done that before have had to do it now. And so that trend has been accelerated. And I think the trend uh, that, that the industry or business in general uh, has been moving towards, which is from solutions to experiences, is also being accelerated now because a lot of that is, is how people will come out of their houses again. And we'll get stuff in public spaces that they can't easily get in their homes. I love that you're talking about this period of time where people get to think about how they might do things more mindfully in future. And I really, really hope that people actually do. Um, it's something I personally have thought a lot about and whether people are actually going to just go back to doing the things the way they did them before as soon as they possibly can or whether they're going to use this time to actually pause, think about doing things more mindfully. And I love your optimism ar around the fact that, that you can, and I, I really think you can, facilitate a more mindful uh, consumption of art and, and, and this ability to, I love that idea of that kind of cash cleaner or palate cleanser of being able to go and, and just look at something that, that gives you that moment of, reflection, meditation, a gap in your everyday kind of hamster on a treadmill type of existence. So that, you know, that's great to hear. I think, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? I think, first of all, yeah, we talk about things going online and accelerating. Even before COVID, I think that whilst there was a lot of digital, you know, I've been at the forefront of digital for the last 20 years, I still think the world is moving online faster and connecting faster than we actually expected. And I think in some ways, people and communities need healing and nourishing from this in a way. You know, it's interesting. I've read studies on how much we are consuming as people on a day to day basis. You know, we often forget that when you read, when you read a Web page, you know, everything that's on that page that you're not looking at consciously is still going into your brain. By the end of your day, you have consumed more than like a number of years of consumption, you know, in, in days gone by. You know, certainly from you know compared to earlier generations, you know it's it's um so so the so the concept of needing to needing to clean the cash when we all know what it's like when our computer slows down, you know it, it's kind of obvious. I think it's about you know making it easy, 
you know, taking away the pain points and the frictions, you know, as well as I do, that word art in itself can have so many connotations, which can like scare people. You know, that's why sometimes a meaningful digital experience or meaningful visual content, you know, for some people it resonates. Now, I think that's why doing all of this with education is really important. Um, and what is the, the right type of content that you present people to, first of all? You know, you see kids and if kids stand in front of that interactive artwork, you know, you know that they're going to love it. It's the thing they're going to start playing around with. But, you know, it's the it's this is the, what's exciting is that the digital medium is maybe the, the one which most re resonates with the broadest possible audience. And the fact that it can be accessed and experienced outside of the traditional walls of a gallery or a museum, which in itself is also um, limiting or, 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 or intimidating for some. It you know, brings all of this together, and also we've seen the trends in, in, as you said, also during COVID, the amount of media consumption has been taking off like crazy. You know, there's a need now for that to be incorporated with a social experience, which I think we can bring. Um, and you know, a lot of people have had enough of the mundane streaming media. You know, once you've kind of gone through your Netflix, you know, some people say to me, and maybe this is a good way to finish this answer. It's like I wake up in the morning, I want to check on my family. I might then read the news, okay? I then might want to have like a, a moment of inspiration. It might just be a two minute, you know, two minute something. Uh, you know, and I think that when you have this community which brings all of this together and presents it in easy format, whether it's on a mobile or, or on a big screen, I think that, uh, that we have a chance, we have a chance to do something kind of exciting. So I, I hope, I hope you're right. I really hope you're right. Um, I, and there's a question that came up uh, when you were talking about uh, having an experience and then bringing it home again um, to do with the brands that are implementing that experience. And a question came into my mind there that I'm sure is something that, that you're dealing with, which is how do you how do you strike a balance between art and and an unencumbered digital image? Um, or experience and branding. So do you find that, that your customers are wanting to, to put branding in or how do they build their, their own identity into the experience? So, you know, one of the things we've needed to deal with from day one is context and format. How do you create a context which is presenting this sacred art form and giving it its, its moment? Um, and not abusing it by integrating with advertising or this, that, and the other. So, so, so I think context is key. Um, I think understanding format, you know, it's a different context when you see a screen in the lobby of a hotel to in a gallery. So we have to be very mindful and creative. The way the art is presented, you know, the, the black screen before the artwork is shown, which presents the name of the artwork and the artist is important. You know, we do have ways to interact with, um, commercial brands for example brands are often the sponsors so you know you go to major art fairs there's a difference between showing an ad and being the sponsor of a premium art experience so you're not touching that ex art experience you're associating your brand with it and saying i'm I, i'm bringing this experience to you courteous of um so so that's important um and then again i think every aspect of that journey you know i can i can even show you something else here which which um, is interesting. So this is an example whereby someone, for example, can go into the lobby of a the lobby of a hotel and see this beautiful piece on the screen. Okay, they have the ability to go into the mobile app and um, and and understand what that work is. And then once they interact with it, you can see experience on home. So it's courteous of Hilton. So here you can see that you've got the art then you've given you're giving someone access to this art experience courtesy of the brand they download the app go home they can cast it onto their screen at home mm. it wow. changes you then bring in the ability to have you know all of this social aspect so you can share it which then always is responsibly showing the artist names and then from the brand you have the opportunity to then present back you know this is what marketing this is all the business intelligence that across number of these number of screens in a hotel, these ones were scanned, these ones were taken home, and these ones were shared with. So you're able to actually bring it all together and combine the things that are important for 
a brand in terms of their positioning, the things that are important for a corporate organization in terms of you know, intelligence and things that are important for the artist and the art to maintain the integrity of the artwork. I'm glad I asked that question because I was unaware of that whole back end that, that I think is really uh, an important point to bring out. So we've been talking for, for quite a while now and we probably should wrap it up, but I really want okay. to, to, um, to, give, to, to ask you how people get in contact with you because this is great stuff. I can imagine everyone wants to, to at least look into it. Well, we'll put to the side the background that we'll we'll look at doing something together because I think there's an opportunity to, to to go to market with some stuff together. But you know, neo.com, www.neoniio.com. Um, I think that uh, I'm proud to say it shouldn't be too difficult to find us, and and anyone that engages through the site uh, will be responded to by our team um, across the US or Asia um, or in Europe, and uh, and we'll look forward to exploring any opportunities. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Rob. So that's Rob Anders from NEO. And I really believe that, that this is transformational. And it's, for me, been a, a really fascinating Surroundscapes episode. I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, we'll also be doing an audio podcast version of this. So you can listen to the audio bit, obviously, with a, a video-based initiative like Neo, that may be less of a wonderful experience than some, but it'll be there. And uh, please come back for more of these Surroundscape episodes. So thanks very much. Mm -hmm.